Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history. I love history. If you love history too, this is the channel for you. During the Second World War, the United States and her allies had the trouble of transportation. How do we move men and materiel from the arsenal of democracy across the world's great oceans to the theaters of war? And one of the ingenious solutions to that problem was the Liberty Ship. These were transport vessels that were based originally on an English design, and they were built using modular construction, which means that they could be built in sections that would be then welded together. And this streamlined construction allowed the United States to create a staggering 2,710 Liberty ships between 1941 and 1945. And that is far and away the most ships ever built on a single design. And importantly, many of those ships were built by female workers in 18 different shipyards in the United States. Another exciting thing about the Liberty ships is that they were originally designed for a short shelf life. They had a five-year design life. They were just going to be used to carry stuff across the ocean during the war, but many of them successfully operated even into the 1950s, and some redesigned versions were still operating with the military even into the 1970s. In fact, there are still three Liberty ships afloat today, all of them floating museums, but two of them fully seaworthy. But there is one more Liberty ship that you should know about. The SS Richard Montgomery, which is submerged in the Thames River with enough high explosives in her hull to create an explosion that would create a tidal wave that would flood the city of London. The SS Richard Montgomery was built by the St. John's River Shipbuilding Company, the seventh Liberty ship built by that company. She was laid down in March of 1943 and launched June 15th of that year, and she was named after an Irish-American general in the U.S. Revolutionary War. Like other ships of her design, she had a displacement of 14,474 tons, a length of 422 feet, and a beam of 57 feet. She had a crew of 45. In August of 1944, the Montgomery was loaded with nearly 7,000 tons of high explosives, mostly aerial bombs, at Hogs Island, Philadelphia. She was eventually bound for the port of Cherbourg, France, now in Allied hands after the Battle of Normandy. Importantly, Liberty ships usually had a draft of 28 feet, but because of her load, she was trimmed for a draft of 31 feet. Those three feet would make a difference. She crossed the Atlantic Ocean without incident and arrived in Southend on the River Thames, an important hub for shipping in the Second World War, on August 20th. She was supposed to wait there for a convoy to take her across the channel to Cherbourg. The harbor master on Southend Pier, in charge of all shipping on the Thames estuary, ordered her to berth in an area designated as the Great North Anchorage, near the seaside port town of Sheerness. There was an argument between the harbor master and the assistant harbor master because the depth at low tide on the sandbanks in that anchorage was less than 30 feet, but the Montgomery had a draft of 31 feet, but the assistant harbor master was overruled. She dropped anchor and in the night she drifted over one of the sandbanks and at low tide she grounded, buckling some of her plates. Some of the ships in the area had seen her drifting towards the sandbanks and had blown their whistles in warning, but the officer in charge had done nothing to save the ship and didn't even wake up the captain who was asleep in his bunk. She would have to wait at least two weeks for a tide high enough to lift her off the sandbank, and even then that would only work if she were to have all of her cargo removed. And so on August 23rd, they started removing the cargo using the ship's own equipment. But as she sat on the sandbank, the stresses were too much for the hull, and she cracked in half and broke on the back. And that caused holds one and two on the bow end of the ship to flood. Well, they were able to empty the other holds, which were still above water, but as the ship broke apart, they abandoned the salvage and left her where she was, with some three and a half thousand tons of high explosives still on board. As the ship was obviously a total loss and other ships demanded attention, they decided to abandon the wreck and left the wreck with three and a half thousand tons of explosives sitting in the London shipping lanes, apparently assuming that someone else would clean it up later. But they didn't. The Montgomery wreck and her three and a half thousand tons, some nine thousand different munitions, including at least a thousand huge thousand pound bombs, still sits in the River Thames today. 
So, for starters, what would happen if all of those munitions blew up in some catastrophic explosion? Well, simply put, it would be the largest non-nuclear explosion in the history of humanity. New Scientist magazine did some calculations in 2004, and they determined that if all the munitions were to explode, they would throw debris nearly two miles in the air and create a tidal wave 30 to 40 feet tall that would go all the way to central London. Although, some experts argue that a catastrophic explosion is unlikely. Rather, they surmise that only a few of the large bombs would likely explode, and then all that would happen is that they would throw 9,000 different pieces of decaying World War II high explosives all over one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. The official view is that it would be more dangerous to try to remove the explosives than to just let them be. And there's some truth to that. A similar attempt in 1967 to recover a much smaller wreck of a munition ship four miles offshore created an explosion that measured 4.5 on the Richter scale. But there are significant concerns with leaving her where she is. Although the heavy bombs don't have detonators on them, the ship included hundreds of containers of smaller cluster bombs, and those did have their detonators, and they could potentially still be active. So as the wreck decays, there's a concern that the containers of cluster bombs could collapse onto the heavy bombs and cause a catastrophic explosion. There's a more obscure risk, too, as there are still mines from World War II in the Thames estuary, and there's a concern that if a mine were to break loose from a frayed cable, that could float into the Montgomery and cause her to explode. There's also simply the risk of a collision with another ship. She's got a wide exclusion zone, and she's well marked, but there have been several near misses over the years, especially in rough weather. And the new concern is that the ship and its wreck could be a target for terrorists. And so the Liberty ship that the people in the nearby town of Sheerness affectionately call Monty sits there in the Thames today, daily testing the theory that inaction is better than action. The only real solution, which would be a careful removal of the explosives, would cost at least millions of pounds, and nobody wants to pay for it. But the longer the ship sits, the more it decays, the more serious the problem becomes, and the more expensive the recovery would be. And so perhaps the Richard Montgomery is the world's greatest example of the adage, never put off till tomorrow what you should do today. I'm the History Guy. I hope you enjoyed today's edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to 10 minutes long. If you did enjoy it, then please click the like button that's there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, then write them in the comment section and I will be happy to respond. And if you want five more minutes of history, all you need to do is click that subscribe button that's on your right.